Okay, so uh, I am here with Ken Korak, who is the baseball play-by-play -play announcer for the Oakland Athletics. And first off, I want to say thank you very much, Ken, for having me and spending some time with me. Thank you, Chris. It's good to be with you. All right. Um, we are actually here in Orange, which if I threw a rock ten times, I could probably hit Angel Stadium, where you will be calling a game tonight with the uh, Angels versus the Athletics. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. You know, it's about a five-minute drive, uh, if that. So. Very convenient for us to stay at the hotel down here. Right, and uh, I'm going to give everybody an idea of who you are, Ken. And uh, this is your 22nd year in the American League. It's your 18th season with the Athletics, and it's your eighth as the team's lead radio announcer. And scholastically, you earned your education from places like San Diego State and UC Santa Barbara. But one thing that I saw that really interested me was the fact that you went to KIIS Broadcast School, which people in my class would know as. Uh, 1027 KISS FM, which is one of the largest FM stations in the world, and I wanted to know what was that experience like? I didn't really go there for more than a couple of weeks, to be right. honest with you, so I just took one class there. Yeah. I actually never completed the program, so I probably I can't really <laughs> give you a great answer, honestly. Uh, um, yeah. It wasn't something that I really was attracted to when I was there. Right. Um, not to, to um, I guess, knock the place or belittle it, um, it was just... What they were teaching was not something that I really wanted to get into. It was primarily um, a program designed for disc jockeys. Right. And yeah, that's at, what I was wondering. At, at that point in my career, I had no experience whatsoever. Yeah. And I was just looking for some kind of opportunity and also the chance to try to get better um, because all I had done was record games into a microphone and read the news into a microphone, read the morning paper, um, and try to simulate doing a newscast. And so. The one class that I took there that I really took something out of was a class in diction, so that's fine. Okay, um, I'm going to go, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to go over some what I call Kenisms, and I'm going to ask a few questions, and then we're going to close this thing out and let you get to work. Um, it's been said that you often reset the game during an inning or before a tense situation, reciting the count, runners, demeanor of the pitchers, attitude of the crowd, and you really paint a picture of what's going on in the game to the listener. How did you learn to be so descriptive? Well, I think that that's what it starts with, Chris. When you start talking about building a broadcast, you have to start with the fundamentals. Yeah. And so, especially on radio, um, we're the eyes and ears of the audience. And so I would think, and I've said this many times, that this is a very subjective business as far as how we evaluate announcers. But one thing you can always do is try to paint the picture. And so when someone is listening to a game, I think they have to know the score. Yeah. Uh, they have to know if it's a right-handed hitter or a left-handed hitter. Is the center fielder shaded toward left center or right center? What's the count? Um, is he deep in the box or is he close to the plate? Things like that. And so I would hope that anybody that's listening would have a sense when they tune in a, a game that, they, that they're in the game with me. Now, other things about your style, the way you call a game, or your voice, your inflections and all that, I think that is very subjective. But one thing we can control is the fact that we cover the fundamentals as far as setting up the basics of a broadcast. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And I think that that's what some of the best broadcasters do, especially in sports in many countries um, Some of the overseas. other things, a uh, few more questions, and then we'll close this thing out. Um, everybody is familiar with the uh, blockbuster movie Moneyball, and you were actually in that movie, or at least your voice was. Is that right? Yeah, I actually um, acted in a scene in the movie, and to show you my ability as an actor, that <laughs> right. scene is somewhere in Hollywood on somebody's cutting room floor. Uh -huh. It actually never made it into the movie, although I am getting residual checks. Oh, good. Uh, every couple of months or good so, for you. Uh, there's a check that comes in from Sony Pictures, Yeah, and that doesn't hurt. <laughs> nice. Sure. But I give the producers of the movie a tremendous amount of credit, Chris, because they comb through literally hundreds of hours of audio tapes from that season, and specifically the 20 game winning streak in 2002. Yeah. And they could have easily just used voiceovers or had Hollywood actors or other play-by-play -play people 
maybe simulate those play-by-play -play calls without being so diligent and to go through the, the tedious process of going through all of the audio tapes from our games from that year, not only radio, but also television. And so that was a big thrill um, to hear my voice and the voice of Bill keep King. With these, because, keep up yes. with these bigger teams with higher payrolls. And one of the questions I had out of that is how do you feel about the monstrous payrolls of some of these, not just the Yankees anymore, but we see the Dodgers with, you know, a, a billion dollars and all these investors and the Angels who you're about to play have three or four of some of the biggest hitters and, and pitchers in baseball and a tremendous payroll backing that. Do you think that that takes away from the purity of the sport at all or how do you feel about that? These are in first place. Yeah, right. That's true, isn't it? So I don't get caught up in the yeah. payroll aspect of it. It's a team I sport, really isn't it? Yeah. Season six times in the last 13 That's years. That's right. Yes, so, since 2000. Uh, would Billy Bean like to have more money to play with? Obviously. Would yeah. he like to be a higher revenue club? And that's part of one of the reasons why the A's want to get a new stadium. Yeah. But the reality is that I don't think that having a lot of money guarantees success. And thank goodness for that. Yeah. Because I, I still think you have teams that have a lot of money that it's almost as if that. that the money gives them the license to make bad decisions. Right. Now, the A's have a much smaller margin for error. Um, yeah. They have to be much more careful with their investments, but um, it's worked out. I agree. Well I agree 100%. Um, one last question, and then I'm going to do a little closeout. Who do you think is the uh, greatest athletic of all time? Um, I feel as that anybody would probably say Reggie Jackson, but they have such great players, you know, Ricky Henderson, Jose Canseco, Mark McGuire, Fozzie Campy, so many over the years. Uh, who, who do you think has really stood out in that club? I think Ricky Henderson. Yeah. I, I don't think if you ask the A's fans, I think it would be almost unanimous that Ricky was the greatest athletic, yeah. at least Oakland athletic. Yeah. Now, if you go back to Philadelphia, that's a different story. Because right. then you have to bring in guys like Jimmy Fox and Al Simmons and, and some of those immortals from the Connie Mack days. But Ricky Henderson, to me, may have been one of the top five or six players in the history of the game. Yeah. And uh, certainly uh, unanimous that people would say he was the greatest leadoff hitter of all time. So I, I don't think there's any question that Ricky, no, that's not to, to demean Reggie and his accomplishments and some of the other um, players. Real quick before I do about. close this out, I know you weren't announcing, but I'm curious about what you remember from 1988, game one of the World Series, Athletics Dodgers, Kirk Gibson gets up with two injured legs and Dennis Eckersley serves up a home run in the bottom of the ninth inning, really shifted the momentum of that game. Where were you? What do you remember from that? I was driving with my wife. I had done a football game between San Jose State and UOP in Stockton, California. And I was driving back to San Jose listening to the game on the radio. Um, and those memories are indelible. And I think um, I talk about this in, or write about it in the Bill King book because people remember Ben Scully's call, which was phenomenal. Yeah. Um, in the year of the improbable, the impossible has happened. And then Jack Buck on CBS radio, yeah. you know, I can't believe what I just saw. Mm -hmm. Joe uh, Buck's dad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, see, for you, he's Joe Buck's dad. Right. You know, for yes. me, he's Jack Buck. <laughs> right. Um, but uh, Bill King made a great call there, and, and nobody ever hears it. And so we did transcribe that call of Bill's in the book. Yeah. Um, Chapter about that, of the year, of, uh, you were inducted into the Nevada Broadcasters Hall of Fame in 2003. Um, in 2000, your 2005 season, your radio team, including yourself and Bill King and, and Ray Fossey, were ranked second best in the American League by USA Today. Uh, your national work includes broadcasting major league games for ESPN Radio and several bowl games, including the Peach Bowl, the Vegas Bowl, Senior Bowls. And your charitable work includes an establishment of Ken Corax A's winning for the community, which is raised, which at the time raised over fifty thousand dollars for the high school programs in Oakland, including fifteen thousand dollars of your own donation. And Ken, in my eyes, you are a true legend in the game, and I can't tell you how much I appreciate the time you've spent with me today. I couldn't put it into words. I really appreciate it. Well, I wish you the best of success, Thank you. Chris. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Thanks for having me. All right. Thanks, Ken. All right. We're good. Yes. Okay. Good. It was about 21 minutes. Okay. So 21 minutes in. Oh, boy, that thing could have went. seconds. Yeah. So All that's right. fine. Is that okay? Oh, that's more than okay. And if this thing kept if up, then works, I've got it. Then you've got that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll send this in a file. Yeah. Thank I'll, you. Yeah, MP3 format, whatever. Whatever. I don't know anything yeah. about that. Okay. But I'll just send it in a file, however it is. Okay. So I assume that's what it is. I mean, yeah. you can download it off the computer. Sure. Yeah. So you, yeah. It'll be easy. Yeah. That was fun.
Yeah, I thank you. Now, now can you can you just real quickly can you give me some real honest criticism about how you felt that went about how you felt I carried well, I myself think, in the I interview. Think you were a little rushed, and I, I think because of the time and yeah. <laughs>